Thanks for joining me today as we create these gorgeous gift cards. And this is Jen Lee with Gentastic Journey and our card crafting video series. So today we are going to use a very simple gift card template that I found. I found this gift card at Hobby Lobby and you put that gift card right there in the center. It's a four inch square when you close it all up, but they were pretty boring. So I thought, you know what, we can create something way more exciting. And I could have just put some embellishments on there, but I thought this is super easy. Just making some notes for myself that this is a four Four inch square. It's also a four inch circle. So if you have a circle die set, you'd want the one with the four inch circles. And if you have larger circles, then your square would just be larger. I just used my circles to create the template and I made it out of cardboard. And there I have a second one there that we're going to show you in the second half of this video. So for today, I'm going to create a very pretty, elegant gift card holder. And I'm using this double-sided Stamparia paper. I don't use this paper often, so I thought this would be great for this project. So I'm going to outline my template, and then I'm going to use my Tim Holtz small scissors, and I'm going to fussy cut out this paper. And I've sped this up for you so that you don't need to watch me cut the whole thing out. Sometimes I get impatient when I'm watching YouTube videos, so I try and cut out as much of the parts that you will inherently understand. With fussy cutting, the most important part is to move the paper more than you move the scissors. It just makes it a lot smoother. I've mentioned that in other videos. This is a pretty big shape, so sometimes you are moving the scissors and the paper at the same time. Okay, so we have this beautiful piece of paper, and as you can see there, that's going to be the shape at the end of it. This is one of those where you just, each flap goes inside, 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 and then they all fit together and keep it closed. And so I cheated and just used that to help me figure out where the edges are, but you basically just turn them over so that they all, all the half circles meet in the center. And then you can use a bone folder to help you make the creases a little bit more significant. And then you can see there I'm trying to make sure that they're all in the right place. And then I'm measuring to make sure that it, this is indeed a four inch square. Since this was my template that I was using, I wanted to make sure it was correct. So I'm going to use some of my glue dots and I keep my glue dots in these foam dots in this little box that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just putting a glue dot on the back of the gift card so that when I adhere it in the middle of the gift card holder, it'll be perfectly attached. Okay, and you can use either the outside of the back of the card for a label, things along those lines. I'm going to use the same Stamparia ephemera for this gift card to see if I can make it a little bit prettier. And I'm pulling out a little bit of everything. I don't really love any of this so far. So we'll see what I come up with. But that's the beauty of this is we can kind of play around with it and see what suits us for that day. And there are a few in here that could be used like a to from gift card, but I decided to flip it over and see if I want to do maybe something on the inside where all the pieces meet together. And I did pull out that one pink rose, but I'm just going through everything else to see what else it is that I have in my little box. And these are the same boxes I use for my stamps. I use them for my ephemera as well. So I stuck with that pink rose and we'll see if we can add a few more things to jazz this up a bit. And I have these leaf dies. I think will be beautiful with this and we're going to use them to add a little bit more interest. So I'm taking a piece of scrap paper and some Stampin' Up! stamp pads. And I'm going to use some different colors. Since the Stamparia paper has more tans and very muted greens, I decided to take out a few of these Stampin' Up! stamp pads in garden green, in old olive green, and then in crumb cake color. For me, sometimes it's a little bit easier if I cut everything out in a white piece of scrap and that way I can color it however I want to color it but you can certainly cut these out of a piece of green paper. I just didn't think I had green paper that would go very well with all of these muted shades on this background paper. So I'm using my sticky mat and you can see there I did not clean it off last time so that'll be a problem for me when I try and clean it off this time because usually if you clean off your sticky mats when you first ink them then you don't have a problem getting the ink off but because I waited I probably will but I use this just so I can stick it down and I can be messy with my inks and I'm just using a 
thicker paintbrush and we're just going to put on some of these different colors and I ended up just going with the crumb cake color and the old olive color and the reason for that is I thought those two together would make a muted greenish brown color and this is the part of card making that I think is crafty because we can paint and make it look very artistic. I enjoy doing this part of card making very much and you could see here I'm just putting some darker and I use a little rag here to wipe off some of the ink. I could use the inside of the Stampin' Up! stamp pad. There is the other side of it. I could keep that open and use the ink in there, but I just decided to wipe some off on this rag that I keep for my crafting. And I think those came out really pretty. So now we'll put them on the gift card holder and see what we want to do with this. Okay, and here I sprayed my sticky mat with some alcohol and water mixed together and you could see the one that I used last time still left a mark. Note to all of you, <laughs> don't leave your ink. Clean it up right after you do a project. Okay, so we're going to try and assemble this. And these two pieces of greenery, even though they're in the same die set, they are very different. And when I put them on here, I think I almost either need one more of each or I need to maybe cut these up a little bit, cluster them together a little bit more. The rose is going to be the piece that you're going to use to pull one flap and then it'll start the whole thing to open. So I want to include these green pieces on the back of that rose. So I'm just going to put a little bit more so it'll be across from each other. And I'm going to put these green pieces on the back. Now, had I thought about this, I would have used another piece of rose or I would have put another piece of paper on the back of that rose because when you do open up that gift card holder, you'll see the glued on stems. And it's not a big deal because most people are just going to pull that back and they're not going to see a lot of it. But if you want to be very precise and have it very well finished off, I would put another piece of paper behind that so that you don't see the glued on pieces of greenery. See how the back of that looks like that. And then I decided I was going to put a tag underneath that rose, but as I pulled them out, I felt like they looked just a little bit too big for this project but you could certainly put that on the other side if you wanted to make this more of a two-sided gift card holder, but I really wanted it just to be from the front. So then I pulled out my sentiment strips, and these are sentiment strips that I made myself from a two-piece set. It's got all the stamps, and then it's got all the pieces that you can cut out. I also have some that I purchase already pre-cut out, and then I have some rub-on transfers there as well. So you can use whatever you have. I decided to use a very small, especially for you, sentiment strip, and I think that'll be perfect. And I'm just going to nestle that in there and use my crafting tweezers to do that. Again, I'm going to put a glue dot on the back of the gift card so that it can nestle right there in the center and this paper absolutely matches perfectly with this Hobby Lobby gift card which is going to be for my sister's family as they are in a new home that they built themselves and I thought they could use some stuff from Hobby Lobby to help create a more homey feel with something that they purchased from Hobby Lobby. I'm also going to use some of these glue dots to adhere the rows to a couple of the flaps and I'll want it to be mostly adhered to one so I'm going to take the other glue dot and I'll just make it a little less tacky but we certainly want at least one of the flaps to be adhered to the rows and I keep making sure that the dots are going to be on the right pieces and then I pull out the other one just to remember what I kind of was working with originally and I think this is such a gorgeous gift card holder. I'm so glad I made a template for myself and I can use this over and over again for baby cards and things like that. So let's get on to the second one. And this one is a more of a traditional one. It's got some slits in there for the ribbon to go through. So I also created a template of this. And of course, I used a piece of cardboard that didn't quite fit. So I'll show you that in the end. But these are some beautiful papers that I thought would make a very pretty gift card holder as well. And they're all a little bit variegated, so the bottom is a little bit lighter than the tops, and so I think that'll be really pretty when you put all the flaps together. So I'm just, again, doing the same thing. I'm going to put my template in the center of the paper and trace around it, and then we'll fussy cut it out. And so because I didn't have a full piece of cardboard when I created this template, I'm going to try and figure out how I can do this so that I can draw in that little remaining piece. And it's not going to be the end of the world because these are all just flaps that kind of fold into one another so they don't have to be perfect in any sense of the word. And then I decided to cut out two pieces because I didn't have 
a double-sided sheet that was big enough that I wanted to use for this project. So I'm just going to glue the two pieces together. We will have a double-sided gift card holder. And no one needs to know that I used two sheets instead of one. It also makes it a little bit more sturdy. These are just design papers that are not very thick. And I think these will be beautiful because they complement one another as well. So I'm going to use a little bit of my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue to glue these together because that way they won't get wavy. It's such a precise tip that it's going to give me just a little bit of glue so they won't come apart at all. And I'm putting them very close to the edges and we don't have a lot of glue that seeps out either. So I think this is the perfect opportunity. You could also use double-sided tape. I just wasn't sure if that would show through at all. I like my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue and use it when I can. So here, I'm just gonna turn over the flaps and build this together. And then the side flaps are what we're gonna use to glue the bottom flap to the sides. And again, if you have a bone folder, this would be a great way to use your bone folder. Also, if you have a scoring board, you help you to create those perfectly straight creases as well. I'm just eyeballing it with <laughs> my eyes and that's kind of the way I like to do my card making. I do have a scoring board and I don't use it very often. You certainly use your tools if you have them. And I think that pink and coral color coordinates really pretty with the purple and the lavender color. So again, you can see here that I'm going to put double-sided tape underneath that bottom flap just up to the middle so that it can adhere just like you would if you make your own envelopes which I do I'll link my envelope video here at the top of the screen and I'll also include it in the description box then I decided I wanted to make this just a little bit fancier with a edge die I could have used these edge scissors or these fancy cutting scissors, but I decided I wanted to use one of my dies. And it's funny, I thought that we're going to have like little cutouts at the tip as well, but when I pulled it off, they really don't. And so I kind of looked at it like three times like, wait, where are the little pieces? <laughs> so it must be just one of those dies that it's got cutouts in it, but probably to save a little bit on the metal. So again, I have some thin double-sided tape that I'm going to use here. You could use glue. You could use whatever you have here, whatever you're comfortable with. You could even use a tape runner as well. I just like these because they're super sticky and I know they're not going to come apart. And so that's what I ended up using. Also, if you have a thicker version of the double-sided tape, you could always cut that in half and make it a little bit thinner. Here I'm going to use just a cutting blade to make those two slots for where the ribbon is going to go. Unfortunately, one of them is supposed to go lower than where I had already adhered the bottom panel up. So I made my two kind of close to each other and it doesn't matter. I pulled out this gorgeous sparkly ribbon, but once I started using it, I realized that the sparkles all fall off so that's quite annoying for me I don't like sparkles all over the place but I'm dealing with it because I still think the ribbon is absolutely gorgeous so when you tie that on I think it really goes well with all that shimmery silver in the paper in the design paper the pattern paper what do you guys call it design paper or pattern paper <laughs> I hear it different in different places. Anyway, we're going to put another, especially for you, on this one. So that way I can use it for whatever I want to use it for. And I decided I wanted to use some of my paint pens to create a little bit of a border around this sentiment strip. So this is a chrome silver pen and I just put just a border around it. Then I'm just going to glue, I'm going to decided to glue only half of it down because I'm going to put something behind it. So that's why I used my Barely Art Precision Craft glue and just glued half of it on there. Then I'm going to die cut out of the same of a scrap piece of the same paper I used. And I tried to cut it out of the dark because I'm going to put the dark purple on the top. But as I looked at it, I felt like it didn't really stand out enough. So I decided to cut out another one in white and we're going to adhere that one to the back and just offset it slightly so that it will stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to again use my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue and we're going to glue those two pieces together. And if you ever are in a situation where something just doesn't stand out enough from your background, this is a great way to remedy that. I could have used black, I could have used silver, but I decided to go with white. I have white on my sentiment strip, so that actually coordinates perfectly. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of this and then and I'll also put 
a little bit more glue on my especially for you sentiment strip and that will adhere it all perfectly and isn't that just beautiful I love how that came out as well so next I want to show you my templates and how I came up with them so that you can create your own templates and you don't have to go to the dollar store or to Hobby Lobby so with this first one you need an 8 inch square sheet you need to find the center of your 8 inch square sheet which would obviously be at the 4 inch mark on each side and then you're going to use a 4 inch circle die and I put this in the corner of my sticky mat just so that it wouldn't move and I could do some measuring. So as you see you need to start somewhere so I made sure that the top of my circle die was at the four inch mark and then I really want it to be two inches over and two inches over then you draw your pencil and you can draw the whole circle I just knew that I was only going to need half of it so I drew what I thought was half and then so you could see I have a few that went over there and then the center of it will be this four inch square. And so you can either draw in those lines like I did, or you can just fold it all in together and make sure the tips of the half circles all touch each other. If you don't have a four inch circle, then you can certainly cut out a circle and make sure it's four inches, or you could use a bigger one, but then you would have a bigger than four inch square gift card holder. So just keep that in mind. I would think that if you used a five inch one or even a four and a half inch one, then your square would be the same amount. So probably a four and a half inch square or a five inch square. But it's pretty simple. Then you only have to make it once and now I'll be able to use this over and over again to make this beautiful gift card holder. And this one ended up being my favorite, I think. The other one is very simple, but this one, I just think it looks cool when you can open it up and all the flaps turn in together. You just tuck that last one in. The super easy way to make a gift card. Okay, for the other one, this one's a little bit more complicated to explain and I used centimeters instead of inches because the centimeters worked out perfectly, but it's 22 centimeters from top to bottom and it's 13 centimeters wide. So I would start with cutting that out first. For the part where you're going to cut up, it is five centimeters from the bottom to the first fold of the flap and it's the same for the top and then your first crease is going to be at that 10 centimeter mark and then it's going to go in a diagonal down to nine and a half centimeters and then you see that the glue marks there are at the bottom and then you turn it in and you put the glue strips so that that part is there and then you need to make sure that you cut out those little pieces so that the ribbon could go in so there are little slots for the ribbon to go in as well and they don't have to be perfect you can see on mine I didn't have them exactly where they were supposed to go and it worked out just fine so I just wanted to put this out there so you could take a quick screenshot or you could take a picture of it and I appreciate you staying with me here are again a quick close-up of those gift card holders I think they came out really pretty that one's very elegant I love all the shine for that one even though the sparkles cake got all over my craft area <laughs> And then as you can see this one, again, it was a little bit plain and I just didn't like anything when I was at the store. So I was like, time to make my own. And so as you can see, this one opens all up and it's got an inside and an outside and it's just gorgeous. And I love how it coordinated with that Hobby Lobby gift card. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed it. If you would, please hit the subscribe button. And also if you enjoyed this content, hit the like button as well. And feel free to share this with your other crafty friends. I look forward to seeing you in the next video which I make two videos per week on lots of different content, but card crafting is one of my favorites. See you in the next video.